Hi good everyone, my name is Alex. This is just a very short video showing you how to set up the Ubiquity Access Control products. Uh, this video is designed to be as short as possible, so if you do need more detailed information, please do check out the video in the description. We're going to dial straight into it and take a look at kind of the minimum required components here. This would depend on the environment that you're trying to set up, but it would typically consist of a hub that is responsible for connecting to doors, to your readers and the different inputs and outputs as well as locks. This hub is typically powered back via PoE from a switch and then passes that power back to readers connected to it or even cameras as well. So this hub is a central piece for kind of controlling the access side of it. The readers are responsible for granting access and then we do need a unified cloud gateway connected to this environment as well that becomes the brain of this environment. We're going to delve straight into the setup so I'm going to jump over to an environment where I already have my gateway connecting to unify.ui.com. It's a very simple setup. Uh, once that's done, go to settings, control panel, and we want to ensure that access is set up for us. If that's done, you should see an icon at the top that allows you to connect to it. If not done, you can just click on the install button. Let's hop over to the access portion. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, typically adopting these devices through the setup steps. It'll ask you to adopt them. If the devices do not automatically adopt, you should see a list of devices here that allows you to adopt them. These ones have already been adopted. It takes a few seconds to get that done. As the first set, uh, set, uh, setup steps, we typically want to go back into the settings and start working through it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to my control panel, storage, and I want to ensure that my drives are formatted so that I can start recording video footage to this because a lot of your readers will have uh, video capabilities. This will take a, a couple of minutes or even hours depending on what you're setting up. So with the storage set up, we can start and set up the rest of our environment. Next thing I'm going to do is hop over to general, uh, adjust my time format to what suits, uh, choose where our video footage is recorded, our pin code length, um, where we're not, or how we're notifying the admins, um, as well as our data retention. Uh, very easy to get that done. The next thing I want to do is also set up my schedules. So policies and schedules dictate when people can access the building. I've already gone ahead and created a new schedule here. It's called Leader Office Hours. If I want to go edit this, this is extremely easy to do. I just specify when people are allowed to access the building. Um, and I can also create holidays here to say during specific days or during a couple of specific days, I want the, um, the that to be an out of office period, not allowing access essentially. Uh, very intuitive to get this done. Uh, and as a next step, we can also add users to this policy to say specific locations with specific users are allowed during certain times of day. This is very intuitive to do, so most people will know exactly how they want the setup already. Um, as the next couple of steps that we want to do here, we typically want to start adding stuff like our cards. So if we have a bunch of NFC tags or cards that we want to add on, we can go add them in here. You don't need a special reader, you can just go to one of the readers that you already have connected, go next and now hold the card up to that. Once that's done, uh, you'll build up an inventory of cards and you can manually choose to assign these cards to users later on. Uh, with regards to Apple TouchPass, this is a G3 version of the readers and hub that allows uh, TouchPass to work. In other words, you get an NFC credential stored into your wallet. Uh, we're not going to do this for this setup. We do have a more detailed guide on that as well. As the next and one of the most important steps is we also want to add admins and users. Admins being people that are responsible for the IT slash admin side of it. Users being people that are normal users in the company. I've gone ahead and created a new user here called Alex B. Um, in these settings, I can dictate what kind of credentials this user is allowed to use. And I can even go as far as setting an onboarding date as well. Do play around with this. There's a lot of control over the users. And once your users are added in, you can start adding stuff like your card inventory to that user, assigning policies and privileges allow access. Uh, the next step is I want to go to my devices. Firstly, just want to make sure they're all up to date. Next thing I can do is I can also manage which devices are associated to which readers. So which reader associates to that hub um, and vice versa. Of course, from here, you can do stuff like remotely unlock the doors. Um, although there is simplified ways to do that. You can also pull logs about what's happened in this space. 
and you can of course configure the settings. The terminal manager here is very important. This is on the hub itself and with this you're specifying what the inputs and outputs of these uh, of this hub is responsible for doing. I can set my uh, lock, unlock duration, uh, door opener or door operator operations. I can set up sirens or uh, chimes as well to alert if someone rings the bell. I can also do stuff like triggering the door to unlock based on motion. Uh, I can do push buttons. I can set the state of those push buttons, normally open closed. And I can say what happens in case of emergency with keyed emergency override or something similar. So again, very intuitive to do. Uh, work through this to what is actually present in your environment. Last couple of steps here, we can also obviously customize our readers if you have a reader with a screen. And this allows us to set the access methods, we can control what this button does, um, as well as the background, etc. Uh, important here, we do want to set up a call flow to say that um, if someone presses this button, then alert, let's say for example, Alex B here. And I'm just going to save that. Once that's done, you'll see in the topology that if someone presses that button, it will ring through to Alex B. It does also have the option for uh, actually calling you as well, so a phone call. You can enter the phone number and will ring through from a certain number in Australia. Um, and of course you can go customize it from there. So this is just a very short guide. Um, there's a lot more detail that we can go into here and in the next video we do also show uh, the practical setup side of it as well, as much as we can. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day.